Okay, uh, Tyler, can you please hold it yep. for me? Our brains are continuously collecting information. So in this experiment, we'll present you faces. Faces are pretty standard. Within fractions of a second, we register skin tone, gender, the shape of a person's eyes, nose, and more. Your brain transmits that information as electrical signals. Now we have to make sure that we plug everything in. Researchers here at the University of Toronto have discovered you no longer need an expensive MRI scanner to access them. Now we'll connect. Instead, they used a cheap, accessible EEG machine to build a portable translator of sorts that's able to convert brain activity into pictures. I was pretty surprised myself when I uh, when we found that it is possible to reconstruct faces and uh, it took me some time. I don't believe actually that it is possible, but the fact is, yes, it is possible to do so. Wired up to an EEG, participants like Tyler here looked at a collection of faces for two hours. So this is a look at his brain activity. In this are bits of information about the faces that he's seeing. Exactly. One more face. Researchers fed thousands of pictures into machine learning software. As participants did the experiment, the software began linking facial features to brain activity. And you can reconstruct a picture from this? Yes, okay, correct. After processing the data, researchers showed participants a reconstructed photo. So just so I'm clear, so from Tyler's brain activity, you guys came up with this photo. Yes, And yes. Tyler, you recognize it? Yeah, oh yeah. On the left is the original photo participants saw. On the right is a picture created using their brain waves. And here's another one. In both cases, they're not far off from the original. Ultimately, we are involved in a form of mind reading. We're trying to understand what it is that you perceive, what it is that you remember. Professor Adrian Nestor runs the lab. He hopes this type of artificial no, intelligence may one day replace eyewitness accounts or look into the minds of patients with severe neurological damage. The technology isn't there yet, but Nestor insists it's coming. Oh, absolutely. I think it's a matter of uh, when, not a matter of if. The one thing people have always had is the sanctity and the freedom of mind. This is the first time that freedom could be infringed upon. This so, ethics class, also at the University of Toronto, examines emerging technologies. They've been following EEG mind reading. Somebody that's falsely accused of a crime. Now, this is not now, but in time ahead. You could say, well, you know, why don't you scan my brain? Because, in fact, you can have a look and see, you know, what I actually experienced. And so I imagine that even tapping into someone's memory, you can't necessarily, at least at this stage, be certain that mm -hmm. those memories are actually real. Even He's right. Our thoughts, thoughts aren't thoughts black and white images of what happened. They're colored by our experiences and bias. It's perception versus reality. So from a medical perspective, it might be really great, um, but I think it needs to be really properly regulated. I think there would be a serious problem if a company or an institution asked you for, let's say, like your mind reading information. I don't know if you know. They the argue answer, consent would be a pivotal issue in mind reading, whether it's law enforcement or a job interview. Would you be allowed to say no? Uh, to simply embrace all new technology without any sort of ethical parameters, I think is really foolish. Um, and um, I don't think, I'm not anti-science. I would argue none of these students are anti-science. Are you? <laughs> Researchers insist ethics shouldn't derail discovery, but evolve with it, and there's much more to come. We want to be able to reconstruct images based on what people think and not just what people see. Now they're trying to extract text words from our brain. Would sound far-fetched, but it appears we're already staring the future in the face. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto.